good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm sure many of us have not heard of Crystal because we are a relatively young company. Uh, we were founded in 2016. Uh, right now, in two years, we have achieved a lot, and I'm very excited to share some of the very exciting data and the progress that we have made in a very short period of time. We did go public in 2017. It was self-funded in 2016. Um, and obviously, it goes the forward-looking statement. Um, again, what does Crystal Biotech do? We have, what we have is a proprietary technology, which we call our Star D platform, which is basically a skin-targeted delivery system. So what we do here is we use the herpes virus, uh, virus system. As you know, herpes is a skin, it has very good skin tropism. And obviously, the herpes virus is very, very toxic to the skin. So we have very, uh, we have engineered the virus to make it um, less toxic and improves efficiency to skin uh, infection. Again, we have a number of uh, pipeline. We have a very rich pipeline in the skin dermatology area. We have an issued patent, which was issued early this year. Based on this platform patent, we can have a number of other pipeline products uh, piggybacking on this patent. Uh, we have we are building currently a GMP facility, which we're very excited about, as everybody knows the importance of controlling manufacturing and controlling cost, which is a very important component. Again, just to reiterate some of it, we target not just monogenic diseases, uh, but we, we can go after other chronic indications, such as treating wounds. And obviously, because of our delivery system into the skin, we can also uh, target some of the more chronic diseases, such as psoriasis and uh, atopic dermatitis. Again, uh, what, does, what does this uh, virus entail? We've engineered the virus. We continue to work in, on engineering the virus. So the advantage is it can be directly. Again, this is going to be pretty novel because we're the first ones who are going to do a topical gene therapy. I don't think I've heard of anyone else do that. So we're pretty excited about that. So it's going to be a topical gene delivery, obviously off the shelf. The virus is a non-integrating virus, so it's transient, which is good because we can go back and reapply. It's pretty stable. It's stable for days together on bench top, so you don't even have to freeze it. It can be stable, but of course, you need to store it under frozen conditions for long-term stability. You can also repeat administer the virus. It has a significant payload, so you can put multiple genes of a, the same uh, gene, so you can get you know, a very high, a high production of the desired protein. It's, uh, again, got very high transduction efficiency to the skin, and it's got regulatory precedence. This is our pipeline right now. We are in the dystrophic epidermis is bullosa. We are, as we speak, we are in the phase one, phase two clinical trials. Uh, we have other skin diseases like Nathleton syndromes. These are all monogenic diseases. But also we are going after some other conditions such as wound and some chronic skin indi indications. Again, I'm not gonna to spend too much time. A lot of you guys, I mean, I know there's been a lot of talk on cancer, but rare diseases also are very equally important, and there are a lot of unmet needs in these diseases, especially with epidermosis villosa. There is no approved therapy for this disease. Again, as you know, this particular patient population uh, is a genetic defect in call 7 gene, which is very essential to form anchoring fibrils which hold your epidermis and dermis together. When you don't have those fibrils, the uh, manifestation is wounding, the entire skin is wounded, and, and uh, it's pretty, pretty devastating disease. Again, um, there are other gene therapies in this space. Uh, the two current gene therapies use an autologous approach where they take the patient's cells, either fibroblasts or keratinocytes, because of the these are the two cell types that produce collagen 7. Ex vivo process them and put back into the, uh, they either grow into a screen graft are injected. Ours is a very dip different approach of the cell directly onto the wounds as a gel. So again, you know, off the shelf approach for these patients. And so, and this is very important to us because we want this treatment to be available to everybody, not just in the US, but this disease is unfortunately, uh, you know, a disease in all parts of the world. So we wanna make sure that we can uh, provide access to this particular medicine all over the world. That's the goal. Again, I won't go through the biology. It's the same thing. You have the skin, you have the epidermis, and your um, dermis, the fibroblasts, keratinocytes, produce collagen 7, and then you have your anchoring fibrils, 
that hold the skin together. Uh, again, where do we stand? We have filed our IND, we clear our IND, we are in our phase one, phase two trial. We have completed part of our phase one study. We are very excited about that. Very shortly, we'll be announcing uh, clinical data from that, from that uh, phase one component. And we'll be initiating our phase two study shortly. And we're hoping to get into phase three, middle of next year. And um, aggressively, we've moved this program forward. We have orphan drug indication, we have fast track, all of the usual stuff. Again, uh, very quickly, I'll go through some of the in vivo data. Again, here uh, we show that this can be topically applied from interdermally injected into the skin. Topically, you see same transcript levels, same DNA copies, very exciting. So we don't have to invasively put this, the virus into the skin. Um, the next thing is, again, what we show you here is we can repeat administer the virus. And some of this we will demonstrate in our clinic because the product has been repeat administered. So what we're looking to show is con continuous uh, production of collagen 7 protein and the virus. So we can demonstrate that, that, that this particular product is, can be repeat administered because this is a transient virus. Fortunately, the protein is a very stable protein. So we expect once the protein is produced and once it forms the anchoring fibrils, we may, it can hold the skin for long duration and we may have to re-administer every three to four months or even six months. We will evaluate that in the clinic. Um, next study, again, we did some very uh, in, vi uh, in vivo animal model study. This is uh, actually a disease model, what's called as the hypomorphic mouse model, where they produce just 10% uh, of the collagen 7. What I show you here is, as you can see, is very robust production of collagen 7. And this is, again, we believe because our system has multiple copies of uh, collagen gene, every viral particle can produce, is a machinery of producing good amount of collagen. Um, next is, again, here, what we do is another human model, which animal model where you take, it's called a skin equivalent, where you create a skin equivalent, take the disease, uh, take, take the patient's fibroblast and uh, keratinocytes, create the skin and graft it on the mice. Again, we have very, very robust data showing uh, good production of collagen in the right region, and this is functional collagen 7. Many of these patients do produce collagen 7, but they're non-functional. So it's very important when you measure that you show that the collagen, and that how you show that is because of the staining to the two domains within the collagen called NC1 and NC2. That's how you can confirm that you produce functional. So we have very, very robust in vivo data. Um, and again, uh, what we look, and by using immunoelectron microscopy, we look at those tissues and we see anchoring fibrils, and which stains to both NC1 and NC domain. And again, which really confirms that we are producing functional collagen, we are producing fibrils, and we're doing exactly what it does to correct the disease. Again, uh, we've done a lot of animal talk studies. We do a lot of safety. It's pretty clear, clean, uh, no concerns. Again, we have administered this in the humans. Again, pretty shortly we'll be announcing our clinical data. And um, many of this, I mean, the precedence in this disease is when you have very strong in vivo data, especially in those two models, generally translates into efficacy in the clinic. So we are hoping that what we show in our animal model will translate into the clinic. So pretty excited about that. Uh, the next disease that we're going after is called ichthyosis. There's various different kinds of ichthyosis. This is the one specific to a mutation called as TGM1 enzyme. In the absence of this enzyme, uh, this enzyme is very critical for reacting with some of the uh, proteins produces, produced in the epidermis to form quantified layers. And this quantified layers in the epidermis creates this barrier that protects the loss of water and nutrients from the body. And in the absence of this TGM and enzyme, the skin is compromised. And as a result, you have trans epidermal water loss. Very severe disease again. It's very spread all across the body. High infect uh, patients have ex excessive itching, scratching, and an infection. So same concept. We insert the gene, the virus, with the TGM1 gene. And again, we see, I mean, right now there's no therapies in the space. It's retinoids. As you know, the safety profile of retinoids are pretty notorious. You can't use them for long term. Again, same concept. We have taken patient cells and transfect. Again, this virus is so, I mean, transfects these cells beautifully. Within a matter of minutes, 
uh, the fibroblasts and keratinocytes are transfected. And as you can see, we have a good MOI uh, dose response. That means with very small doses, we are able to get large amount of protein. And this is, again, because of payload and multiple copies of the uh, gene into the, uh, into the virus. And next, again, here we did the animal studies here. Again, as you saw, there is a clear dose response. Um, the high dose, low dose, again in green, specific to the human TGM1 antibody. As you can see, with, when you apply it topically, there's all topical studies on the skin. In the right region, in the keratinocytes, you see the nice expression of TGM1. TGM1 co-localizes with lorocrine, another protein in the epidermis. And as you can see, uh, it nicely co-localizes. That means this TGM1 that we produce is functional, and it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Um, again, um, very uh, same properties like KB103. It has very, we have very robust in vitro and in vivo data. Uh, we, the HSV virus has been again engineered to reduce cytotoxicity, and we hope to take this into the clinic very shortly. We file our IND this year, and again, we've got the usual regulatory advantages here, and we move into the clinic. And I really want to quickly touch upon Crystal's core competence. I mean, this is a virus that we have built in house. We have uh, really optimized the manufacturing and production of the virus. So we really emphasize on understanding the manufacturing because we understand that this is a rate limiting step. We don't want to delete, rely on any external um, vendors or CMOs to really you know, process develop because that's a tricky thing. So right now where we stand is we have a robust process that we have, which is a smaller scale, which is cell factory based, both upstream and downstream pretty much optimized into the clinic. We are building our GMP facility. We have acquired, um, sorry, to go back. We have acquired, um, we have uh, invested heavily into bioreactors. We have an Isalis 500 with Isalis Nano, all of the downstream uh, you know, ion exchange column systems for optimization for purification. As we speak, we are beginning to work on getting into a bioreactor. For no, I mean, it's a no-brainer because we want to bring down our cost of goods. Again, here, a bioreactor here is equal to 800 cell factories. Right now, 40 cell factories is the maximum capacity we can build with large volume. So obviously, we'll get there, which will really impact our, our um, cost of goods and production. Another thing I want to emphasize is because uh, production is very important, we pay a lot of attention. Our production of a virus is very much straightforward. We do a lot of the heavy lifting up front. That means we select the HSV virus. It's a clonal single HSV virus. And we select the complementing cell line. So we mar marry each together to get the highest tide to production. So we have spent hours and days optimizing it to impact cost. And I think we've come up with a we are predicting very, very reasonable cost of good in the, in the thousands of in, versus hundreds and thousands. So we're very excited about that. And we continue to improve the science. We continue to work on our technology. And hopefully, we will have many more programs in the future. Thank you.